This is ACT additional math uh, law of sines and cosines. Law of sines and cosines. You will need to write these notes on a separate piece of preferably lined paper. Uh, we are going to go ahead and call this, of course, law of sines slash cosines. Now, before we get into the details of these so-called laws, I do need to say these questions are extremely rare on the test. Maybe you'll see one per test, possibly not even one per test, maybe one every other test, one every third test. When they do show up, they tend to look very intimidating, especially for students who have not uh, done a deep dive into trigonometry. If you know the information that we're about to discuss and have the laws or formulas memorized, these questions actually are quite simple and not usually very time consuming either. So you should also know that the purpose of what we're doing here is simply to talk about what the laws are, when to use them. We are not going to be going through any sort of proofs for these laws. There obviously are proofs for these laws. And if you are interested in the proofs for the laws, you can uh, find videos elsewhere for those proofs. But again, here we are simply going to talk about what the laws are, how to use them, when to use them uh, for the purposes of the ACT. That's really all you will need to know. You will not need to understand how these laws are derived. So first, let's talk about what they do for us, what the law of sines and law of cosines do for us. Uh, we'll write down right here, um, uh, we'll write if given certain information, we'll talk about what that information is in a moment, about any triangle, and that includes, we'll put in parentheses, actually I'll write the parentheses down here, uh, including non-right triangles. I'm just going to write a little triangle symbol there. Um, the, these laws can solve the triangle. If given certain information about any triangle, including non-right triangles, these laws can solve the triangle. So if we were given perhaps a side or two of a triangle and maybe an angle of the triangle or a couple of angles and maybe a side, what the law of sines and cosines will allow us to do is figure everything else out. All of the other unknown angles, all of the other uh, unknown sides. And the really awesome thing about the law of sines and cosines is that as opposed to Sokotoa trigonometry, uh, basic right triangle trigonometry, the law of sines and cosines are applicable to all triangles. These uh, laws do not require us to have a right triangle. They will still work in a right triangle, but they will work in any triangle, obtuse, acute, right, uh, whereas Sokotoa, which most students by sophomore and junior year are familiar with Sokotoa, Sokotoa is only applicable to right triangles. Um, you might even want to write that out over here. So Katoa, those um, simple basic uh, trig ratios um, only applies to right triangles. Law of sines and cosines, all triangles. How do we know that we are being tested on law of sines, law of cosines? We're actually going to write down three little eyeball tip-off clues here. The first one is very obvious. Uh, it's if the question says, if question says law of sines slash cosines. And indeed, uh, many of the questions that we have seen pop up testing law of sines and cosines have just come right out and um, indicated that the question was testing law of sines and cosines. So obviously, if you see a question that mentions the law of sines, mentions the law of cosines, you know that you're going to use uh, these laws. The second thing will be um, if you see, so if you see uh, sine slash cosine, the sine or cosine functions in the question or in the answer choices, but no right triangle. 
So for instance, you don't have to write this down, it's just an example, you know, if you see some um, obtuse triangle or even some acute triangle, and then all over the answer choices, you see some sines, maybe even see some cosines, um, it's still, there's still a chance that you might be using basic Sokotoa trigonometry, but there's also a chance you may have to use the um, law of sines, law of cosines. Uh, and then let's write down um, if you see uh, expressions that look like the laws slash formulas. In a moment, we're going to go over what these laws look like. And if you see answer choices or even something in the question that looks like one of the laws, the law of sines, the law of cosines, then you know that you might be dealing with law of sines, law of cosines. Yet another note you might want to write down, uh, law of sines and cosines questions uh, almost always uh, occur on higher numbered questions. So we're talking maybe 30, uh, question number 30, maybe 35 uh, and up. Um, very frequently you'll see law of sines, cosines questions maybe up in the the 50s, um, but again, we've seen them go down maybe into the mid 30s, something like that. So that's how you will know if the question is testing you on law of sines or cosines. Let's start talking about the law of sines. So let's go ahead and draw out a triangle. It doesn't really matter what kind of triangle it is. Make yours look as much like mine as possible. Um, we'll do vertices A, B, and C. Those will be the three vertices of the triangle. It is convention to uh, call the side that is across from vertex A side little a. Uh, across from vertex B, that'll be side little b, and across from vertex C, that'll be side little c. The law of sines says that the sine of angle A, or vertex A, uh, the, the measure of, of that angle at vertex A, the sine of that angle over the length of the side opposite that angle must equal the sine of this angle, uh, angle B, um, the sine of the measure of that angle over the length of the side opposite vertex or angle B, and that must equal the sine of angle C over the length of the side opposite angle C. Um, these three ratios are equal, and in fact, on a lot of uh, law of sine questions, what you will end up seeing is language that uh, occasionally they'll just come right out and actually give you the law of sines. So this is exactly what we just wrote, sine of A over A equals sine of B over B, and so on and so forth. Occasionally, though, you will see language like this that says the law of sine states that for any triangle, the ratios of the sines of the interior angles to the lengths of the sides opposite those angles are equal. This language is just another way of uh, saying in words what this formula says in formula form. Uh, you might even see the word proportional. Law of sine states that the lengths of the sides of a triangle are proportional to the sines of the opposite angles. Again, that language is just um, uh, saying in word form what the law of sines in formula form says. You should obviously memorize the formula form because for most students it actually is a little bit difficult to translate the wording that we just looked at into the formula. So you should have the formula memorized, um, if, especially if you are going for an extremely high score. In terms of when to use it, so let's write down when to use law of sines. And there are two ways that you should be able to recognize that you can use the law of sines. Um, one is if you are given, we'll just write if given uh, two angles and one side. And keep in mind, if you know two angles, that actually means you know all three angles. So for instance, if you knew 
that uh, this angle was 20 and this angle was uh, 90. Um, 90 and 20 is uh, 110. You would know that this angle over here would have to be uh, 70. Anytime you know two angles in a triangle, you automatically know the third because you would just subtract the two known angles from 180 and you would have your third uh, angle. Um, so two angles in one side actually really means the same thing as three angles in one side. Uh, also, if you are given um, two sides and a non-included uh, non-included angle and we should pause for a moment and talk about what that means so let's say I know uh, two of the sides in this triangle let's say I know this is three and this is seven the included angle is this guy here included simply means the angle between the two known sides these two angles here these guys would be the non-included angles so if we were given these two sides and then one of these two angles, one of the two non-included angles, we could use the law of sines. Let's do a law of sines example so we can see how it works. Um, so let's do this. We will, I'm going to use different vertices here. Let's use Q, R, and S. And let's say that uh, angle Q has a measure, we'll do 21 degrees up here. Let's do 46 degrees. And so we have two angles and now we need a side. Let's say we know that side RS is nine units. I don't know, nine inches, nine centimeters, whatever you want it to be. So you notice we have two angles and one side, which means this is a scenario in which we can use the law of sines. So what does the law of sines say? The law of sines says, that the sine of an angle in the triangle, we're gonna go ahead and use this 21, over the length of the side opposite uh, that angle. So that's sine of 21, that's sine of this angle over nine, which is the length of RS, the side opposite that 21 degree angle. That must be equal to, what are we looking for? Let's say we're looking for QS. So this ratio must be equal to the sine of this angle r up here which is uh, has a measure of 46 degrees over qs side qs again the ratio of the sine of an angle to the length of the side opposite that angle is constant for the interior angles of any triangle so we basically have set up this proportion this ratio on the left must equal this ratio on the right and now to solve for qs what do we do we simply cross multiply like we would in any uh, proportions question. So we get QS, I'm going to put that in parentheses, times uh, sine of 21, that's uh, bottom right times top left, and that has to equal bottom left times top right, so that's going to be 9 times sine of 46. How do we isolate the QS? We divide by sine of 21, divide both sides by sine of 21, and what we end up with is we end up with QS equals 9 sine 46 over sine 21. On many law of sines, law of cosines questions, the final answer will be in this form. In other words, there will not be some number, some ugly decimal number. You'll just have 9 sine 46 over sine 21. So in some cases, this would be your final answer. Let's do go into our calculator and let's calculate what all of that uh, stuff equals. Uh, when we do this, obviously we need our calculator to be in degree mode since the angles here are given in degrees. We are going to uh, make sure our calculator is in degree mode. Yes, it is. Uh, if your calculator is in radian mode, what you would do is you would go down to that third line. You would go to the right, hit degree, and hit enter. My calculator is in degree mode, so I am all set. So here's what I am going to do. I am going to go alpha F1 and enter. And I'm going to do 9 sine 46 up in the numerator. I don't have to close my parentheses there. If you want to, you can. I'm not going to. Uh, over sine 21, I hit enter. And what I get is 18.06. Uh, that went away. 
So I'm going to bring that back up. 18.06, let me keep this on top. Um, and that's the way that we would figure out side QS. Now, if we had been asked for side QR, all we would do is we would find uh, angle S. Uh, angle S would be uh, 180 minus the 46 minus the 21. So angle S would be 113. And then all we would do is we would set up uh, pretty much the same type of proportion. It would just look like this. We could use the sine of 21 over 9 equals sine of 113 over over our unknown side, which in this case would be QR. And again, we would cross multiply and solve for QR in the same way that we solve for QS. So that is an example of using the law of signs. And again, make sure that law of signs is memorized. Um, there are calculator programs that can help you on questions like this. For instance, there is a calculator program called TriSol3. Uh, it stands for Triangle Solver. And if you do have a program like that, it may help you do something like this. Um, you select TriSol3. Uh, you hit enter to enter the program. And in this case, what do we have? We had the uh, angle. We had another angle and we had a side. We had angle, angle, side, AAS. We can see AAS right there in number five. So we're going to hit number five. They want angle one. Now, when I use the TriSolve program, I do like to label what I am entering. So I'm going to label the 21 as angle one. Angle two will be the 46. And then the non-included side or the, uh, the side that we know is nine. We hit enter and the TriSolve program solves the uh, triangle for us. It gives us the third angle. Angle three is 113. That's what we had found before. Uh, angle two, uh, the side opposite angle two. So remember we said angle two was the 46. So the side opposite that angle is QS, which is what we solved for over here. 18.06 is what we got. Try solve confirms that. And then if we had solved this proportion here to get side QR, which is the side opposite, what would be our third angle, angle three, we would have gotten 23.11. That's what solving this proportion would have given us. So again, if you do have uh, a program such as TriSolve, a triangle solver program, they can be a help either in doing these questions outright or in at least checking the result that you found on your own. Uh, in terms of law of cosines, so let's write law of cosines. This one's definitely going to look a little bit more intimidating, but don't be too intimidated. Again, using the law of cosines is not all that bad. Let's draw yet another one of those triangles. So side A would be over here, side B here, side C here. So the, I'm going to write this in, in three different ways, uh, which will simply indicate or which each, each of which will correspond to solving for a different side length. Um, so what we have is we have a side uh, squared over here, and then we're going to have what looks like the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, very similar to the Pythagorean theorem. So this will be a squared plus c squared. This will be b squared plus c. Uh, sorry, let me redo that. Uh, this should be a squared plus b squared. So in each case, we do start with something that looks very much so like the Pythagorean theorem. But then we are going to subtract uh, 2. And here we're going to have bc. Here we're going to have ac. Here we're going to have ab. And I'm sorry, I'm doing this in such a uh, jumpy way, but uh, deal with it. Uh, and then over here, we're going to have cosine of angle A. Over here, we're going to have cosine of angle B. And over here, we're going to have uh, cosine of angle C. So again, let's just look at one row now. We'll make this a little bit simpler. So what we have is we have a side squared equaling the sum of the squares of the other two side lengths. And then we have to subtract out this product, which is made up of a two the side lengths of the other two sides, and then the cosine of the angle that is opposite the side that is squared on the left-hand side of the equation. You notice that that vertex at the end will always match the side length on the left-hand side of the equation. How do we know when to use the law of cosine? So let's write that down, down here. Uh, when to use 
law of cosines. And we use law of cosines if given all three sides or all three side lengths, maybe we should say, to be more accurate. Did I write that up there? One side, yeah, maybe we should add that up here. One side length. And then this is two side lengths up here. My apologies. Uh, just want to be clear. Uh, so if we're given all three side lengths, in other words, if we have side, 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 we, we know all of the side lengths of the triangle. Or if we are given, if given, uh, and in this case, it would be two side lengths and the included, in this case, the included angle measure. Uh, so that would be something like side angle side. If we know a side and then we know the angle in between that side and another side, we can use the law of cosines. Let's take a look at an example so we can try to demystify the law of cosines. Again, I know that it looks somewhat intimidating. Uh, we should not be too intimidated by it. Using the law of cosines is not all that bad. So let's draw a triangle. Again, doesn't need to look any, any particular way. Uh, if you want to try to get it yours like mine, that would be good. Let's call this angle 108 degrees. Let's do, uh, let's do five over there. Let's do 11 over here. Uh, and we will, we will name these vertices. Let's name them X, Y, and Z. So what we have here is we have a side and we have another side and we have the included angle. So we do have side, angle, side. We have a side, we have the included angle, we have the other side. Um, the law of cosines uh, says, so let, let's say we want to figure out what this third side is. The law of cosines says that the square of this side, xz, uh, so let's, let's actually write that. Let's write xz squared. Uh, that has to equal the uh, sum of the squares of these two sides. So remember that's 5 squared plus 11 squared. Again, that's the sum of the squares of the other two sides. And then we have to take away that 2BC, so the other two sides, um, in this case, the other two sides would be the 5 and the 11. Uh, not a 5 and a 5, a 5 and 11. And then we have to multiply all of that by the cosine of the angle that is opposite the side that we put over here, the cosine of 108, therefore. So again, the side that we're looking for, squared, has to equal the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus two times the product of the lengths of the other two sides times the cosine of the angle that is opposite the side that we are uh, putting over here on the left, in this case, the side that we're looking for. And now to solve, what do we do to get rid of that square on the left? We simply square root both sides. Now, as I mentioned in the case of the law of sines, occasionally the answer choice on a law of cosines question will look exactly like this. In other words, uh, ACT will not actually go ahead and calculate all of this out. They will just give you this gigantic square root expression in the answer choices. We are going to calculate this out just so that we know what all of that equals. So we're going to do second um, x squared, which brings up the square root. Uh, we are going to do 5 squared, 5 squared, plus 11 squared, uh, minus 2 times 5 times 11 times cosine of 108, and we hit enter. So all of that is going to equal 13.4. Uh, so this side over here will equal 13.4. Again, if we go into program and we go to try solve, triangle solver, in this case, what do we have? We have side, angle, side. That's what we said over here. Side, angle, side is number one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna call this guy and I am gonna label this. I'm gonna call it side one. Uh, will be 5. I hit enter. The included angle, of course, is not 22. I don't know where that came from, and it's not 0, 2. It's 108. And the other side, side 2, which again, I'm going to label just so I know what I've entered in my program. Side 2 is 11. And I hit enter, and of course, I get for the third side 13.4, which is exactly what I had gotten 
manually. Of course, the program gives me the um, other angle, uh, the, sorry, the other uh, angles, the angle opposite side one, which would be this angle over here. That guy is 20.7 degrees, and then this angle over here would be 51.2 degrees. So the triangle solver has indeed solved the triangle. That's basically it for the law of sines and cosines. Um, we are in a, another video going to do a few uh, more ACT-like examples. Um, if you are feeling a little bit shaky, you should go ahead and watch that video. So once again, don't be too intimidated by law of sines, law of cosines questions. If you know the formula, uh, and even better if you have a calculator program, the law of sines and law of cosines questions are generally not all that difficult. There are some variations as to what ACT will tend to test, and some of those vari variations are a little bit trickier. Uh, again, you'll see a couple of those in the separate video. Make sure you know the formulas, uh, even though they are often given on the test, sometimes they are not, and sometimes they are given in worded form, and if you don't actually know the formula, it will be very difficult to solve these questions in a lot of cases.